Hi, and welcome to our podcast, Books Don't Review Themselves. I'm Kim. I'm Jessica. And today we're going to kind of be doing a generic overview of books that we've been reading and enjoying or hating and any other like TV or movies that kind of flow along with it. Um, the first series that I want to mention is the second Treasures Mystery series by Margaret Evans. I read lots of cozy mysteries. I read lots of series. But I don't often continue the series. It's not because I don't want to. It's just because there's other things to do and there's lots of other books to read. But this one, um, I have been. And I'm on book four now. It's going to be a six book series completely. And she's only up to book four. Now, the reason why I like this series so much is it has a central mystery, you know, throughout the book that she solves at the end or it's solved at the end. But the thing that I really, really enjoy and that Margaret Evans does like really well is that she has an ongoing, not just one, but many ongoing mysteries from book one. So it's, it, you don't only have your single mystery, but lots of other enjoyable mysteries. I'm like in book four, finally, I found out something from book one. I wasn't like shocked by it, but it was still kind of cool How to she do ties it. ties them all together. Exactly. Somehow. Yes. Book four, it was about a very relevant topic that is happening today everywhere so I thought that was very cool how she tied that in too. I'll let you keep going because I see in your notes you have The Midnight Texas and I really 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 liked those books. I did not watch the TV show Mm -hmm. but I I don't know what your thoughts are on it so. (laughs) Okay well the book that I had read was The Small Kingdoms and Other Stories by Charlene Harris. I really enjoyed it. It was a short story. I think there's like six short stories in it four or six and it was basically about a woman assassin so that was fun in and of itself, but it was a short storybook, so it was a faster read, which was mm-hmm. nice. You know, after reading like a 400, 500 page novel, like two or three of them to kind of have a break up. Right. And I really need to read more short story books because those are just fun and I really don't. I have loved Charlene Harris for years. Her writing, it's, this is, I don't. It's a simple writing to me. Yes. It's nothing complex. It's, I mean, you actually turned me on to her in the Midnight um, Texas? Texas series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a very simplistic writing. It's a very easy read. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, to me, like the content of the story is usually a little bit different. Mm-hmm. She usually yeah. has a supernatural element uh, yeah, going yep, on throughout, yep. you know, which is fun. Um, I started her books like with the um, Sookie Stackhouse series, which is also True Blood show on HBO. I think I started that series when it first came out. So that was like years and years ago. And then I've also read her Harper Connolly series. I think maybe it's three, four, five books in it. I don't really recall. That series, though, was excellent. I highly recommend. I I enjoy all these series, but out of all of them, if I were to say you can only read one, it would be the Harper Connolly series. And then, like you were saying, The Midnight Texas, I really enjoyed that trilogy as well. Um, Booksdon'tReviewThemselves.com. I do believe all three of the Midnight Texas books are on there and have been reviewed. So if you want to go check that out. And I watched the TV show as well, where it is not the same as the books, okay. but it's very similar. And I have enjoyed where they've like taken liberties. So I haven't been like, oh, dear God, how could you do that? You know, right. it's it's been good. And I recommend that one, too. I'd say... Maybe read the books first and then watch it, okay. which I recommend all the time. I always read the now, books. Now, is that on HBO? No, no. It's ABC, I think. Okay. Yeah. And isn't that show ending? Yes. I think, wasn't it canceled? Yeah. It's like fortunately. two series, I think, okay. or two seasons, not series, um, which was sad. And the main character, oh God, I can't think of his name. I'm horrible with names. He He's he's attractive, so that's a extra bonus <laughs> while watching that that show. So that's always nice. Kind of ends with any show. Yeah, exactly. Male or female, if they're attractive, that's a bonus. So yeah, I highly recommend Charlene Harris and yeah all of her stuff. And also on the website bookstonereviewthemselves.com, I also did a review of Small Kingdoms and other stories. If you want a little bit more in depth into it, uh, another series that I've been reading is the Southern Eclectic series by Molly Harper. First of all, what I enjoyed about it, I live in Wisconsin, <laughs> so <laughs> Wisconsin, you can hear that whenever you say it, but I am like obsessed with Georgia. I just, <laughs> I don't know if I was reincarnated from a you know past life down there, but just those big mansions, plantations, um, not what happened to the, you know, back years ago, that was horrible, but now there's the beauty of the it's buildings gorgeous, and stuff you know, like and that. Yeah. I don't think I could live down there. Just because I like the cold. (laughs) 
But, you know, to go visit, I think that would be lovely. And one day I will get down there. But anyway, so the Southern Eclectic series by, by Mo why can I not say her name? Molly Harper. There we go. <laughs> Whoever thought of this marketing plan was a genius because it's basically like a novella. So a short book, you know, maybe 90, 150 pages, whatever. And then a novel and then like another novella and then like another two novels and then novella. Why I think it's so ingenious is because like sometimes when you're writing a story, like one character just really shows up front and, front and center and mm -hmm. you have more to write about it. Right. Where there's other characters that you enjoy, but you just don't have as much to say. So that's when you write a novella instead of just adding extra crap that doesn't need to be in the book to make it a full length one. Right. So like I said, whoever thought of this marketing plan, freaking genius. I've read, I haven't read any of the novellas in the series, but I've read three of the books. Uh -huh. And the first one is Sweet Tea and Sympathy. And that one, I laughed throughout the book. I don't, I don't laugh a lot when I read books, probably because I read a lot about murder and stuff. But, <laughs> but you know, this one made me laugh throughout. So I, I, that was really endearing. And then also the relationship between the main character and her father kind of in ways reminded me of relationship between me and my father. So that was just another point of interest for me, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. The next full length one in there is called Ain't She a Peach? And this one I enjoyed because the main character is a mortician. So it's a female mortician. Growing up, if I didn't have such a aversion to smells, I think I would have became a mortician because you don't have to deal with the living that often. And that really appeals to me. <clears throat> and then the third one that I've read is Give Me Some Sugar. And that's more like a second chance romance. So like they met in high school and were they or were they not in love? Who knows? They do. We don't. Whatever. But then they got together later on in life and, you know, happy endings, blah, blah, blah. Great. So that's another series I recommend if you want a little romance. And it's a sweet romance. It's not, you know, like sex and... Like Fifty Shades. Exactly, like Fifty Shades. <laughs> it's not all erotica. It's a very sweet romance. All of them are. So mm -hmm. it's a good series. Um, so as far as what I've kind of been reading, I am a big Chelsea Handler fan. She has a lot of, I guess you could call them autobiographies. She also has like comedy books. And then I read My Horizontal Life, a collection of one night stands. And it, the title of the other book is Are You There Vodka? It's Me, Chelsea. So the one night stands, does she go descriptive? Yes, each chapter is like a different one night stand. And there was like a midget and like... It, th that I laughed, and I read that when I was in college, and I really, really enjoyed um, her show with Chelsea lately. I just really liked her because I, when I, growing up, I was always kind of blunt and had her sarcasm. Just growing and, up, you're not blunt anymore. No, yes, I've stopped <laughs> that. I've since changed. Uh, no. um, but I didn't. I wasn't exposed to a lot of people like that, and it was. I was always told like. Stop it, yeah, girl. Stop. Yeah, Use your be manners. quiet. Like Swear adults words. talk for like all those things. And so when I started wa getting older, and I was watching like the Kardashians. I'm sorry. Oh God. I know. How can in we Jersey, be friends? In Jersey oh. Shore. Ah. Um, I got turned on to Chelsea lately, and I really liked it because I'm like, oh my God. And all my friends even said, you know, you. You like are, her. You're like her. <laughs> so I really liked her outspokenness and just her personality. Now, fast forward to her new book. It was published on April 9th of this year. It's called Life Will Be the Death of Me and You Too. I listened to this, and I think listening, I like listening to audiobooks. I know Kim doesn't really enjoy that. But it was read by Chelsea Handler, which I think kind of added, added to it. Definitely yeah. added to it. This book, though, was so different than what I was expecting. Was it more serious? Yes, because she no longer does Chelsea Lately. That's no longer an E. Mm -hmm. um, she does a, a show on Netflix, but it's like her... Basically, she she describes it as she, she had like a mental breakdown or like a midlife crisis where she was just like, you know, I'm not aware of how blessed and lucky I am to have what I have yeah. and the money that I have and all these things and that, you know, she's so privileged and she doesn't understand what comes with being privileged. And she said the catalyst to that was Donald Trump. So, like, the first mm. quarter of the book mm. was her just going off about, like, Donald Trump and that kind of stuff. And I wasn't expecting that at all. Like, mm -hmm. I was expecting another funny. comedy, yeah. funny book. And mm -hmm. this book and all the reviews, you know, on Goodreads and all the other apps that, that I've looked at, 
have said the same thing. It's mm-hmm. not that the book's bad. It's just a definitely more serious mm-hmm. side of her. So um, if you're used to her comedy and you're looking forward to that, yeah, you're, just go. You get into some it of it, but yeah, it's definitely a more serious side. And she talks about like her going to therapy, and um, her brother had died when she was younger. Her older brother that she was really close to. She goes into how she always thought that that did not affect her, oh. finding out that it did. Years later. And she <laughs> said that one of the correlations she had with Donald Trump was that her dad was Donald Trump, but without money. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, because he. she said he was a used car, a salesman. Used car salesman that yeah. just kind of like took advantage of people and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed the book. However, it almost felt like it drug on a little bit because, like, like a good portion of it was about her essentially bitching about Donald Trump. Uh, and Which is fine if you like him or don't, whatever, but... Right, it just, it wasn't... It's filler. It feels like filler. Yes, it wasn't really what I was looking for, or, you know, and I don't know, it just... The, there were good stories because she had stories about her childhood and that kind of stuff like intertwined into it. So it did end up being a good book. So you um, actually need to read all the Donald Trump stuff because it's all intertwined. So you can't somehow, just be like, yeah. skip yeah, the first yeah. half of the book and just mm-hmm. read it. Okay. And so I'm, I've been trying to sit down for the last like two weeks and write a review on this book. And I'm kind of at a standstill because I'm not totally sure how I want to review it because it's like I liked it but at the same time there were a lot of things I didn't like about it so I don't know how to rate it because give it like a well I mean when I when I have books like that I look at it was it well written Mm -hmm. and did it flow if it did like I would give it four out of five stars because you know that way yeah and and I think you did just review it so yeah (laughs) and a written review. Yeah. And then the other book that I read, I'm a big Lisa Scottolini fan. Yes, Watching this, Lisa. You're you can awesome. send me your books. <laughs> I guess I should start with so she has novels that she puts out, but she also has like a, a series about like an all female law law firm. Her last book was called After Anna and I think I'm just looking up here when it was released. Was that part of the law for, firm one? No, that was a sing uh just a regular standalone. Yep, standalone novel. But this was the first book of hers that I saw her write in this way. It looks like After Anna was released in March. Of so 2019? yeah, okay. of 2019 and then her latest book um Someone Knows was released, I want to say, June, beginning of June. God, how'd you get two big I don't know, and they were so good. So, After Anna is written, each chapter is someone's perspective. So, like, there there was, you know, several main characters, but the way it was written, it was like, I think one of the main characters was Thomas. So, it was like, a chapter was Thomas Mm -hmm. before and then it would go back to Thomas after. Okay. So it kept going back and forth like that. And it just kept layering to the story. And I have never read a book like that. And I was actually told by a few of my coworkers that Game of Thrones is written that way. Mm. The book, which I have not read, you know, those, those books. That thick. They're yeah. Huge. Yeah. So that writing to me, like. You really liked it. I really liked it. I ate it up. Like I, like I couldn't get enough. And so. When Someone Knows came out, it was written the same way. And I had a couple people on social media, you know, ask me. Because after Anna, I felt like started up really fast. And I was intrigued the entire time. Where Someone Knows, I was intrigued. But I felt like it was a little bit of a slower startup. Which, having read the book now, I understand. Like, she needed to set that scene. Mm -hmm. But she wrote it the same way. But what she did differently was she did 20 years earlier, and so that was almost like a section of the book, and she did each person's point of view, Mm -hmm. and then she did 20 years later, and then each person's point of view. And I got my mother-in-law hooked on on Lisa (laughs) Scatolini, and she had, I sent her um, Someone Knows for Mother's Day, and she read it before I got a chance to, but I have since read it. She does such a good job of where you think you know what's going to happen, and then she fucks up your whole world. Yeah. 
And like I, I was telling my husband, I'm like, you know, I finished this book and I'm just like, what the fuck just happened? What just happened? I was like, I knew, I knew who did it. I knew who had this. I know, I know the culprit and all this stuff. And she just flips a switch and you're just like, holy shit. Didn't even see that coming. See, I need to read her then because... Most of the books that I read, and I read a wide variety, but right. I know what's going on. Right. You know, like when I was in a book club at the library, and we read these books, and we all read the same book, and like the other people would be like, oh my god, I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, I was on page like 37, and I knew what was happening. You know, it's like, uh, so I might need to have yeah, to read Yeah, and those. like, I would say Someone Knows was more of a shock to some extent than After Anna. I remember leaving after Anna after reading it and just being like holy shit like that was but that also could have been because it was a new writing style right. on top I'm it. just like that <clears throat> that was so good mm-hmm. but with someone knows I literally like was stressed out at work because I was reading <laughs> you didn't know what yes happened. and I told my coworker, I'm like I'm so stressed out right now she's like why I'm like I need to finish this I have 80 more pages I need to know who that's the fuck did book. it that's a good book and she's just laughing and I'm like at lunch and she was like do you want me to like take lunch at this time so you can take lunch this time and be alone and read. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks. You know, like, I've considered going to the locker room at work to read because it just, it was, I needed to know. Because, like I said, for most of the book, you kind of knew what was happening. And there were a few things that I, you know, I could figure out. And the other thing, too, with Someone Knows is she started it, someone shooting a gun and whatever. So she started it, like... You know there's going to be a murder. Yeah, you know someone's dying Mm -hmm. and, like, you know, and then you slowly figure out who it is. And that kind of was predictable in my opinion. But I think she did it that way on purpose. Mm -hmm. So it just. you knew, but then she's like, yeah, so you knew. Yeah, but that was only one part of the Mm -hmm. story. So, Mm -hmm. like, there were little bits and pieces that were predictable that you were like, oh, I saw that coming or I saw this coming. And then you get towards the book and you're like, yep, I think this person, you know, did it or Mm -hmm. they knew or whatever. And then it's just, like, slowly, it just, I would say the last 100 pages, it went back and forth between, I'm like, oh. It's that person. Like, person. yeah, 75% of the book, I was like, this person, Mm -hmm. yep guilty as fuck Mm -hmm. then you know it was like no this person and then the last like i said 100 pages it was just like wait a minute maybe it was this person and then you're like no way there was this fucking person and then she kind of steers you back to what you thought and then she steers you away from it and then back and then it's It's just playing cat and mouse with you yeah that's a good author because if they you know they send you little breadcrumbs throughout the book and Mm -hmm. you're like haha i knew it i was right yeah then you get more cocky and you're like yeah i'm right and then you're like what what just happened right you know that's actually yeah so it was phenomenal and like i said i enjoyed after anna but i think just something about someone knows like and i had even asked my mother-in-law when i was like halfway through it i was like did this start a little slower for you and she was like you know i don't know but she had finished it so she had that whole like oh my god moment yeah but that's like been a trend through um for authors for i'd say a couple of years now like with thrillers and stuff like that they'll change it between point of views and for me (laughs) i hate to admit this because this makes me sound really stupid there's been some books that i've read and i don't pay attention to chapter headings i just Mm -hmm. read and like these books you know would have like the name caroline and then lisa you know so you'd know who it was supposed to be but, like, for quite a few books before I finally, like, duh, I need to read the chapter headings, I'd be like, what is going on here, you know? Right. And then and you'd know. That was honestly on the reviews and some of, like, people I've talked to on social media about Someone Knows. Because, like I said, at first, it wasn't that I didn't like it, but it was a little bit slower to me. And I'm like, this is unexpected. Mm-hmm. And I asked people, because I did have a little bit of a hard time because... The, after Anna went, I believe, between, like, three. And that's not that Three bad. main characters. Yeah. So that's not that bad. Mm-hmm. This one went with, like, four, three, three to four main characters. Okay. And then it started incorporating the parents of the characters. <laughs> and you had a hard time kind of keeping up. Mm-hmm. But what I noticed is that you could catch on really quickly once you started reading. You're the like, chapter. okay, this is who it is, you mm-hmm. know. And it got easier as you went on. But that was the biggest complaint that I saw was people mm-hmm. were like, I can't keep track of who it is. And they yeah. were only on page 90. So I was like, keep going. Yep. It, it'll it's worth better. it. That's how Agatha Christie writes a lot of her mysteries. They're 
I mean, I, I shouldn't say it for sure because I'm not like a Agatha Christie super fan or anything. Especially like her ones with Russian names and stuff like that. There are just so many characters mm-hmm. that it's so hard to keep track of everyone. That's why I enjoy... And Usually I read the book before I watch the movie. Right. But with Agatha Christie, I always watch the movie. <laughs> well, and it's probably <laughs> names that you're not... Familiar with. So yeah. I'm like, um, I don't... I don't... I'm confused. So... Well, and that's like my one coworker who hopefully is listening to this, <laughs> has not read Harry Potter. Ooh. Yeah. Is she, like, super religious? Or no, she just... Does, she And she it? even said herself, she was just like, you know, I'm sure I would like it. Mm-hmm. I just never got around to reading it. Mm-hmm. Well, she... So I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Um, I have another coworker. I have two other coworkers who are big Harry Potter fans. Actually, one of my newer coworkers has um, her daughter's nurseries decked out in Harry Potter. (laughs) Um, You know, it's so cool. So anyway, you know, I told my one coworker, I'm like, you're kind of the oddball out. Like you need to read it. So she, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she downloaded the, the ebook and she read it and she was like halfway through it. And she's like, I actually really enjoy it. Good. So, (laughs) but it was so funny because we were talking and you know, there are some of those unique names in there now, Mm -hmm. probably not super unique yet at the, at the first book. However, she was talking to me, and she was like, I've only known that Harry Potter is about a little boy with glasses. Okay. That's all I've known about it. And I'm like, what? That's, how can you not? I mean, are, do you live in a cave? And then, so she was reading it, and she was like, yeah, so Snipe really doesn't like Harry and Helium. And I'm like, you mean Helium? Sn- <laughs> I'm like, Snape and Hermione? But we laughed so hard because she was like, I couldn't think of the name. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I Helium. guess okay. Hermione... You know, you wouldn't think of that mm-hmm. if you're not, you know, a big fan of it or surrounded mm-hmm. by it. So that's funny. Yeah, I, we laugh so hard about that. But <laughs> yeah, she's like, now I'm at the this part. So I told her, I'm like, I'm so excited that you're actually reading them. <laughs> it's like you're jealous of her because she's reading it for the first yes. time. You're like, I want to be you to read it again. Yes, and time. like, I just got a new iPad. Uh, I upgraded my iPad but got a smaller iPad mm-hmm. because I'm going to use it for more ebooks and that kind of stuff. I wanted a Samsung, but I ended up staying with the iPad because when the Harry Potter series was first released and on Apple Books, it had like these cool features and graphics. So I oh, spent so like a 100 bucks, yeah, downloading mm-hmm. it. So it's like I have to have an iPad so I can keep those books. <laughs> oh my God. And it's like you'll be reading and a snitch will be flying by. And I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> is What is that thing that just came out where it's like Pokemon Go, but it's Harry Potter? Ah, uh, It's like Wizards, Wizards Unite or something. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. I It, it sounds fun, but it's like I'm not going to have the time. time to do it. And it's weird walking around. Like I thought Pokemon Go was weird just because <laughs> – you're, walking you're randomly around. walking around, yeah. like staring down at whatever. Yeah, you're but gonna, at least people are getting outside and exercising instead yeah. of my fat butt just sitting upstairs reading all day. So yeah, but then you're gonna have like some popo stopping you because you're out at 12 p.m. and you're just what are you like, doing, man? Yeah, you're just like out there, like oh, I'm just playing Wizards Unite, I'm just casing the neighborhood. Nothing, yeah, not that much. Yeah, but like in Wisconsin Rapids, yeah, they would not do that to us. They'd be like, whatever. Yeah, whatever, to be fair. Yeah. So another book, um, it's called Carrots, and the reason why. I started reading that is because of the title and they say really? don't you know don't judge a book by its cover but I obviously judged it by its title I'm like carrots what kind of a title is that for a book it's just crazy so it's by Colleen Helm and it's a Shelby Nichols mystery and I think she's up to like I don't know like 16 or something of them it was really good and I was really happy I got it uh, once again it's a series so I've only read the first book even though I'm would like to read more. I just haven't got around to it. But if you enjoy like the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich, you'll probably like this one. It's similar main character with the the funniness of it. Another one is The Malta Exchange by Steve Barry. If you've read Dan Brown or watched Dan Brown movies like The Da Vinci Code and so on and so forth, Mm -hmm. you'll probably enjoy Steve Barry as well. When I worked at the library, if men would come up and ask for suggestions and if they weren't really looking for, like, Clive Cussler or for some Western or something, mm-hmm. I'd be like, check out Steve Barry. And they'd be like, who's Steve Barry? And I'd be like, let me walk you to the shelf with his numerous books. And his main series, the main character is Cotton Malone. I love these books. And I actually got my stepdad addicted to them, too. But they're thrillers. They're very, very fast-paced, which I love. 
and they're historical. So he often talks about like it's like the Pope or like um, oh gosh, who are those people with the red crosses? Cardinals. Well, yeah, he does talk about cardinals and stuff too, but it's just all historical, and it's he does tons of research for these books. Right. So when you're reading them. Like, what you're reading, 98% of it is true. Yeah, you know, and just, I really, I, I found that I really enjoy that because, like, Kristen Hanna, she has some really good books, and they seem to be getting better right. as, you know, more books are coming out by mm-hmm. her. But she had, like, The Nightingale, mm-hmm. um, and that's about, like, World War II. Yeah. And she had to do a lot of research and whatever. So, like, a lot of the things incorporated mm-hmm were facts and it would I loved that or like Stephen King around the whole premise of the book was avoiding JFK getting assassinated oh it was like a number wasn't it yeah um, and, and it, they did a tv series with it too yeah and that one I listened to as well because I mean that's a big book but mm-hmm. it was so well written and at the end of the audiobook that I listened to, Stephen King talked and about his research and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I can't even imagine. I can't like even imagine where you begin to go in depth, mm-hmm. you know, to make sure that you're being accurate and what, you know, because yeah. granted, I wouldn't know probably. But, yeah, if he was or wasn't. Right. But just the time, you mm-hmm. know, it probably is years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and Steve Barry he talks about it at the end of his book. He you know gives you all the details of his research and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I don't know if he did it in the beginning of the series, like years and years ago. I don't know if he was that in depth with his notes, but he is nowadays, which is great. Oh, uh, I read a lot. I don't get, I get excited about books, but there's rarely a book anymore where I'm just like, damn, and like need to think about this thing for like a, a week. But I just read Middle Game by Sean McGuire. I think you say her name, Sean. It's S-H-E-A-N-A-N. Sean? I don't know. But um, I always say Sean, so <laughs> if it's not, I'm sorry. She also, all of her series that she does, I love. She also has the October Day series, which is like a fantasy series with the Fae. That uh, there's very few authors that I will put on my, what's that list, um, like pre-subscribe to <laughs> what's the yeah. word I'm looking for you know like buy it before, pre-order that's yeah. the word there we go <laughs> duh um that I'll pre-order a book but her especially her Toby Day series I will I love them so much but she also has another series the encrypted series which are encrypted are like creature weird creatures you know like mm-hmm. snake people or whatever that one's really good too and she also has a Wayward Children series, which it, it reminds me of like American folklore slash like hauntings and stuff like that. Ooh. So it's kind of fun. But the middle game, it doesn't say that it's part of the the um, Wayward Children series. So I don't think it is. But yet there's still like a few little things that kind of tie and in. Isn't that kind of like what Stephen King does? That's why I love him. Yeah. I love seeing the yeah. tie And his son, Joe Hill. Like yes, he'll tie it does in it too. too. And also with his dad's books. And right. his dad does it with his books. Yep. So like whenever I start reading one of those, like uh, you get excited. Nosferatu and stuff yes, like that. Yep. You could see it. Oh, God, oh, I'm going to get on a tangent now. I'll get back to her. But <laughs> another book by Joe Hill that I really liked, and this thing, I, I think it's like 700 pages. It's a long book, but it's called The Fireman. I have it. I oh, haven't read it yet. I'll oh, read it. It's gone. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> like, yeah, I love when they cross over. And, like, talking about, we'll go into a movie thing now. Like, Kevin Smith does that, too. Uh-huh. He'll have his characters cross over from movie to movie. And Tarantino, does Tarantino? Yeah, a little bit. Kevin Smith more so, but that's why I love him so much. You know, I just, I love stories just, that do that. It adds a little something, a little like... The world building is just yeah. extremely awesome. It's phenomenal. So anyway, back to Middle Game. <laughs> it was a long book too. I think there's over 500 pages. And it was, it was, it was different from her writing, but yet it wasn't at the same time. But just the concepts in it, it was like about... I don't, I don't really want to tell you because I feel like I'd give it away if I told you right. anything. So just read the description yourself on Amazon or whatever. Decide if you want to read it, but you should because it's great. But yeah, I finished that book and I just, I was upstairs in bed reading and I just sat there for like 10 minutes going, what did I just read? You yeah. Know? I'm just like, <laughs> this is awesome. So that was, that was cool. Anything yeah. else you want to jump in? Um, so I, um, 
got a little behind on reading the last mm-hmm. like two weeks. But I was looking at one of the books I read because I kind of saw you had some like Netflix notes. Mm-hmm. And one of the books that I did read um, earlier this year, I think about a month ago, um, when I saw that the Ted Bundy tapes was going to be on Netflix, I read The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule, okay. which I believe is t- the Ted Bundy's friend. Who kind? Of, I think it. I think she worked with him okay. and didn't really believe it at first. Um, until um, all the evidence started piling yes, up. Yes. Oh, um, yeah. So that was a really good book. So we did another podcast about a book <laughs> about BTK. It a was called Killer's Daughter. Yep, by <laughs> Carrie Rawson. I expected that book to be like Anne Rule's Stranger Beside mm-hmm. Me. She had. Just kind of like really cool insight on Ted Bundy and what she thought of him and whatnot. So I did watch the tapes. That, Is that the Zac Efron one? No, but that was, that's like actual like audio oh, okay. and some video footage and whatnot on Netflix. I believe that's what it's called. That was good. However, I have to say the one with Zac Efron I thought was phenomenal. Yeah. And... So there are a couple scenes in that Netflix where Zach Efron is literally mimicking something that creepy, Ted Bundy creepy. did. Um and most most of those scenes were like news okay, press reels things. Or whatever. Yeah. But then at the end of this Netflix series they played the real like side by side. Yeah. <gasps> Really and it, it was crazy. And, yeah. you know, I always said, like, my coworker and I were talking about this yesterday, is that I'm like, you know, I I guess I don't know if I found Ted Bundy attractive. attractive no. Just because I never, that's not my era. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe and, if you were. But I looked at his pictures last night because I'm like, mm-hmm. Dude, did I? Like, I guess I don't really fully know what he looks like. Like, I know he's a serial killer and crazy. <laughs> but I looked him up and compared to Zac Efron, I'm like, yeah, similar. I can understand. Like, he is pretty good looking, mm-hmm. just like Zach Efron's really good looking, you know, for our generation. Mm-hmm. And I just, I thought it was really well done. And it's almost scary. Like, I, it is scary because, like, Ted Bunny, Ted Bunny, <laughs> Ted, Ted Bundy, Bundy, you know, being a serial killer, but like, Zach Efron played like such a normal person, like a good looking guy going to school and whatever so well. So now are you questioning Zach Efron now? And you're like, dude, are you a Well, I was telling my coworker, killer? I'm like, we we might not. Our husbands could be serial killers. We don't no, know. No, we would know. We <laughs> would know. We are not like other people. We would know. <laughs> but like I like I was saying is Anne Rule's book um, was a little more detailed. Like I would say that Anne Rule's book and the, t- the tape on Netflix were more detailed than Zach Efron's um, movie. Yeah. Well, I and, mean, they have to have it more right. entertaining. Too. And I felt that it helped having read or watched that to kind of know a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But, like, my husband didn't know a whole lot. He's heard the name, but he didn't read the books or yeah. watch the tapes or anything, and mm-hmm. he really enjoyed it. And once it finished, it was like, okay, what other serial killer <laughs> stuff can we watch, more you know? serial killers. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. That's enjoyed good. it. And I felt like the book was a really good, like, preamble to the Netflix, so. Nice. Yeah, it's fun when you find a subject. I mean, it doesn't have to be serial killers. But it usually but is. But it usually <laughs> is, because that's how things go. But, yeah, when you find a subject and you're like, oh, and then you can dig back into the history of it and mm-hmm. see. And, I mean, with internet, you know, nowadays you can find anything, so. Yeah. And then another book that doesn't involve serial killers. Ooh, what? Um, that actually was turned into a movie that I have not watched yet, um, was Beautiful Boy. And the, that one. the movie has Steve Carell in it, um, and I don't know who the other person was, but basically this father wrote this book. Um, I believe his name is David Sheff. Okay. He wrote this book based on having a son who was addicted to, I believe it was heroin. Uh-huh. Um, it might have been meth too, but I believe it was heroin. Okay. I thought it was so well written because the thing was, is, like, he was a good dad, mm-hmm. and the mother was a good mother, and they, you know, they did divorce, but they were good parents, and, and all this stuff, and it's like, this happened, and I thought it really was a, a good book about addiction okay. that showed it can what it does, to anyone. To, it can happen to anyone, and mm-hmm. what it does to a family, and what this, what extent this father went to, to try to 
find his son on the streets yeah. and all these things. And I just thought it was so beautifully written. I would like to see the movie. Mm-hmm. I have not yet, so I can't really compare it to that. But it wasn't a book that I thought I would ever... Why'd you pick it up? I think, honestly, I was kind of in a lull. I didn't really have Mm -hmm. much that I was reading, and it was available because I downloaded it, I believe, on the library app to listen to. You know, it just, it was really, really fascinating to hear, and it's sad, but I think it is, it's a good eye-opener of what, you know, a, a drug addict looks like that comes from... A good family. A good family. You know, it's not always someone who might have grown up in foster care or, Mm -hmm. you know, less than ideal circumstances. So I just thought that was... Now with opiates, (laughs) opiates, yeah, I can talk, with those drugs, you know, I mean, anyone, right? anyone can do it. And it's horrible. When I was younger, I, you know, I always thought, you know, it's just, oh, it's yucky people. But no, it's anyone. Yeah. So I just thought that showcased that really, really well. So That's very good. That was a really good book. Um, Let's see what else. Ooh, A Grave Magic by Belinda Sheehan. And Belinda is spelled B-I-L-I-N-D-A. Belinda. Because every time I type it out, I wanted to do B-E. And I'm like, no, it's B-I. It's B-I. So anyway, um, my husband actually is friends, you know, like social media friends with her on, I don't know, Facebook, whatever. And he recommended this book to me probably like a year and a half ago. So I downloaded it right away. And then it just sat on my Kindle forever. And I don't know why I didn't read it because seriously, her book is like my catnip. This is like, you put a book like this in front of me and I will love it. Usually some, there's been a couple that have not been well written. (laughs) So my catnip is basically a witch finding out that they're a witch. So yes, I watched Charmed, the old season and the new season. It was a really good book and it's a series. And this is one series that I will continue. Uh, I haven't started the second book yet because I've been doing other things, but I definitely will continue it. Like I said, it's called The Grave Magic by Belinda Sheehan. Um, What I wrote really quick, it's a fairly typical witch urban fantasy book, which comes into her powers, which realizes she must save the world from impending disaster, which gets some sidekicks to help her, and which succeeds in the end. Or does she? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to read the book and find out. And like I said, every (laughs) every time we do one of these like general talking about our books, I am going to mention Letter Kenny. This show, (laughs) you must watch it. Um, even if you hate it, I don't care. You still have to watch it all anyway. Hulu kept showing it on my, you would like these things. And I'm like, Hulu, you're on crack. What is this? So after like the 800, 800th time it came up, I started watching it. And I watched the first episode and I'm like, what is this? Then I watched the second episode and I was still like, what is this? And then by the time I got to the third episode, I'm like, I love you, Letter Kenny. And I'm like, everyone must watch this. So yeah, I swear to God, I even tell like, not rando, rando, complete rando strangers, but like people I barely know, you know, like people I've just met. I'll be like, hey, have you ever watched Letter Kenny? <laughs> if not, why not? Go home and watch it right now. Yeah, when you said that to me, I was like, what the fuck is Letter Kenny? Because I don't have Hulu. Mm-hmm. And you you need to watch it. You need to watch it. It's so funny. So that's probably something that we're going to end up watching. Yes, um, definitely. Since it comes highly recommended. Highly, highly. And if, if you don't like that style, I'm sorry. You should still watch it completely anyway. What would you compare it to? Oh, God. I don't, it's just, it's. Like, would you say, like, what's the style of comedy? Because it's comedy, right? It's comedy. So would you say it's like a family guy or. I never watched Like a guy. South Park or like a. It's a bunch of hicks in this small crappy dying town that like have different um so that sounds like groups. josh would love that uh, maybe yeah mm-hmm. there's like the farmer hicks there's the hockey hicks there's the like i don't remember what they call them like they're the scuzzball druggy hicks mm-hmm. um and then you basically have these four people it's a brother and a sister and their two friends that like hang out all the time and then just their adventures with each other and with the town's people and it looks like a stupid show, and in ways it is a stupid show, but if you actually listen to the dialogue, it is really intelligent. I mean, like, when the three boys are sitting on the porch being hicks and smoking their cigarettes and stuff, but you listen to what they're saying, you learn things. I mean, you're, you're learn like, science and stuff, and it, it is crazy. And then, like, another thing, like, in one episode, um, Wayne is the main guy, the um, main character. Well, they're kind of all main characters, but... And 
so he starts fighting people and he's like, don't come up the driveway. We'll meet you down there. So every time, and they just have a phone on the wall. They don't have cell phones <laughs> at, him, at all. They just have the home phone. So the, he'll get a ring from wherever on his home phone. He'll answer it. Him and his three buddies are probably around the table. They'll like each take a shot and like smoke their cigarette for like two drags. So it kind of sounds a little, um, What's the one on Netflix with Ashton Kutcher? The Ranch. Have you seen that at all? I have not seen that one. Does it, it sound like that? A little bit. Like, okay. it sounds probably more redneck mm-hmm. and trashy than The Ranch. But, but it is. But, like I said, at the same time, it's really intelligent. So well, it's and crazy. The Ranch is so popular. I mean, it's it's a, really, really one. good. Yeah, See? it has Ashton Kutcher. And then I think the first s- several series has the guy from that 70s show, Oh, Hyde? Yes. Okay. The guy that played Hyde. Here's me doing Red that. was in it. Really? Okay. Red and okay. Kitty. Okay. Um, I don't know their real names. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I, like I think Ashton Kutcher was the producer of this show. Okay. So, yeah, it was, it's really good. I am not watched was all of it yet, but. So pissed. So, I was on Facebook, and all of a sudden, I see this um, thing come up for Letterkenny that tickets are going to go on sale in, like, 10 minutes. I'm like, what? So, like. I went, and there was, in Minneapolis and Chicago, they had shows. So mm-hmm. I'm like, we're going. I don't care how much these are. I'm like, I do not care. We are going. So like I said, it was like 10 how minutes. How would it work? I what think would a show be like? They, they have some, um, like, skits um, already pre-recorded. So I think they show those. And then I think they do some live skits and then just, like, some comedy off the audience, perhaps. I mm-hmm. think they do that. So I went. As soon as they were supposed to be on sale, they were sold out. And I'm like, what? So I go to, because there's like two dates in Minnesota. And I think actually today is the date for one of the Minnesota ones. And God, when I say Min- Minnesota, I sound so Minnesota. Anyway, <laughs> oh my gosh. So there's two for Chicago and two for Minnesota. So both of the Minnesota were booked. And I'm like, what? I mean, I'm like dropping the F-bomb. I was not pleased. So I'm like, okay, fine. If we have to go to Chicago, we'll have to go to Chicago. Those were sold out too. And I'm like... Obviously, people love Letter Kenny, so <laughs> yay, but I want some tickets. So that made me sad inside. But anyway, got anything else? <laughs> I did read, well, listen to another book mm-hmm. um, that I was going to mention because I know the anniversary was um, in April, not too long ago. So I read the book A Mother's Reckoning Living in Aftermath of Tragedy by Sue Klebold. Oh, which killing or school shooting is that? Uh, Columbine. Okay. Ugh. The yeah. fact that I have to say which school shooting is that, that's Yeah, I mean, horrible. that speaks volumes. Yep. That Columbine, the shooters were Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, so it's Dylan Klebold's mother wrote this book. And the thing that scared me to fucking death, mm-hmm. no pun intended, was how normal of a family... He came from? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I was, like... You know, I have been on the fence about having kids for probably the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't like kids, not that I, you know, don't love kids, but, like, reading that kind of stuff scares me because I'm like, if you're a good parent and this still can happen... It can happen to anyone. Mm Mm-hmm. What what do you do? I just felt awful, awful for the mother. See, now my cynicism is coming out, and I hate that I am this cynical, but I am. Now, she wrote this book, and that's just her point of view. Right, you right, know, right. Was his home life really that good? You know? Yep. I mean, there's three sides to every story. But anyway, back to the Right. Book. And so I watched her do her interview, and she kind of got her ass chewed, which I'm sure she expected, mm-hmm. because they were saying... You should have known. Yeah, this type of stuff. And like she said, gun they didn't have guns in their home. Mm-hmm. That was not allowed. She, she also did a TED Talk... Okay. Um, about it, and I just, I know it's her side and all that kind of stuff, but obviously he was very depressed and had issues or whatnot, but I just, it, I, it gave a really good insight from a parent's perspective in this case, because you know, I don't want to say you know, but you hear how it affects the victims mm-hmm. and, and those. Victims' that, families and yeah, the survivors. Yeah. Yeah. You never really hear about the parents, the parents mm-hmm. because they're victims too. And I know people are going to be like, oh, you know, well, they raise this, blah, blah, blah. One thing I didn't even think about is she kept saying that she had a hard time saying because the two shooters ended up committing suicide mm-hmm. that she had a hard time reckoning that her son had 
had passed away of suicide given what had occurred. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing she said was, Mm -hmm. okay, so now her son, and it just like, it, it brought me to tears, but she was saying that when they first heard that this was going on at the school, they were like, oh, my God, is he safe, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. Then they got word that he was one of the, sh- the possibly one of the shooters, mm-hmm. and it wasn't confirmed. Mm-hmm. And she said she literally thought in her head, if he is, please, God, let him die. Seriously. Like, like let him die so he's not hurting any more people. Mm-hmm. Um, For a mom to say that. Yeah. For so, any parent to say that. Right. And then after this all happened, she was, like, talking about how difficult it was to have a funeral. Oh. And I was like... I cry at everything, people. Dear God. I know. I was listening to this on the way to work. and I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) Because it was like, I never even thought of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you never even think of that. So I just, I think if given the environment we're in today and all the shootings that are happening, educate yourself on, I don't want to say how it happens, but it it almost is. And Mm -hmm. how to be proactive and that kind of stuff and I just thought that it was a really well written book um yes it's just one side to the story but it was yeah. really well written and you believe her it's not like you're yeah. like are you being shady or yeah you know. I did not I did not get that vibe mm-hmm. um and I mean she talked about her depression and I mean her and her husband ended up getting divorced and mm-hmm. and he completely stays out of the spotlight at all and mm-hmm. You know, she just talks about her therapy and how she's trying to continue to live. Yeah. 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 So I just thought it was just a really beautifully written book for such a shitty, shitty situation. And like I said, I know the anniversary was at the end of April, so I thought it was kind of a... Good timing. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, since I have watched horror movies since I was like eight and since I read horrific things... I literally, I walk into a room, I make sure I know where all the exits are. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I take a deep look at every person. Right. I'll be like, you where's the nearest weapon? Right. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just. How do I get out? You exactly. Know, what do I do? Where yeah. can I hide? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's so sad that we have to worry about that at schools. Yeah. You know. Schools, anywhere. Churches, for the love of goodness, people. Yeah. Yeah. Churches are, you know, a big yeah. one. It just, I don't know. I just thought she did a really, really good job. Mm-hmm on that and I would really recommend her TED talk I think it's only like 15 minutes long maybe a little bit longer yeah um people spend more time on their phones in the toilet right but it was just it it, and even like watching her interview like she still gets like teared up upset and whatever because she does genuinely you know (laughs) yeah she wasn't like oh I'm glad this happened (laughs) you know it wasn't like that or yeah that he wasn't in the wrong like Mm -hmm. You know, she like I said, for her, uh, for a mother to say that if he dead. is the shooter, mm-hmm. I hope something stops him. I hope he dies and something stops him from hurting more people. Yeah. So. That's damn. Oof. Yeah. So do you have anything <laughs> uplifting? To- uh, yes, I do. <laughs> which it also includes death, but it's still uplifting. Um, <laughs> so on Netflix, there's another show. It's called Chambers. I don't really want to spoil much of it because it's a 10 episode series. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, this girl who is poor gets a heart from a rich girl, and the rich girl's family, trying to keep their daughter alive, or so you think, wants to bring the other girl into their life and everything. It's just a bunch of messed up situations, some blood, some guts, some scary for other people, perhaps, situations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the part that I, I enjoyed the whole thing. But the thing that really got me, and I, I can't say because it will give it all away. I first learned about this entity in uh, religious studies when I was in high school. And when I first learned about it, I was like, I was blown away. I'm like, why do more people not know about this? But I knew why more people didn't know about it because the Catholic Church doesn't want people to know about this. Right. So they incorporated it into this TV series, Chambers, and I that just made me more happy because I enjoyed Chambers all the way through, but then with the end entity, it just it just put a big smile on my face. I'm like, nice. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to add that mm-hmm. to my to my Your watch list. Of, yep. Um, and then the other thing, I, oh, I got two more things, I guess. Um, Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I read this book years ago. My husband recommended to me like when we first got together. I loved it, and that's one book at the library that I would re- recommend to everyone. I'd be like, I don't care if you only read romance, go read this book because it's just it's it's a fun romp and it's got some serious issues and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so we're watching it on uh was it amazon prime i think it's on we're only into episode two and i think there's only six episodes i'm enjoying that too so that's fun 
And then the last thing. This is going to date me, but I don't care. Whatever. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm 42 years old, so this is this is what it is. Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> Six episode um, event starting on Wednesday, August 7th. Um, it's not exactly 90210. It's their care them actually like it's actually Shannon Doherty and like them they're not playing their characters I don't know much about it but like what their life is like now but they said like their enhanced life so maybe mm -hmm. they'll be more bitchier more richer I have <laughs> no idea but uh we don't get Fox so I'll be going over to Jess's house to watch those so yeah. I'm I'm excited I'm, I'm shamed to say <laughs> that I'm watching them but I'm excited at the same time so um yeah it brings back my high school years <laughs> Not that I want to relive my high school years, but yeah, that's good. And I did find the Stephen King book that I was referencing earlier. It's 112263. It is a very thick ass book. It is. It's big. Like I said, I listened to it. I enjoyed listening to it. I've had people say that they've tried to read it and couldn't get through reading it. Mm -hmm. um, if that's the case, I definitely recommend listening to it because it was so cool how he tied in history and whatnot. And you abs if you absolutely can't listen to or read it, there is the TV series, too. Yeah, and that I have not seen, so I, I look forward to looking Watching at that. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that is all I have for... Yeah, that's all I got going for on. For this episode. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to like and subscribe, that's awesome. Oh, I have one more thing to mention. Yes. So... Since we'll be doing these discussions, Kim and I had talked about, you know, as seasons change, like, I am a basic bitch. I love <laughs> pumpkin. Pumpkin? Yes. I pumpkin do not. Yeah, she, Kim's not. So I, to me, reading, I, I love to read. And people, I guess, are always shocked because I, I think it's coming back. I think it's becoming more cool now to, to read. read, where you know, I still know a lot of people that are like, yeah, I don't really read. When people tell me that, when they think they're being cool, like, I haven't opened a book since high school, I'm like... Jerk. You have no idea what you're missing. <laughs> What's like, wrong with you? You know, like, find a book that you do like. Exactly. It's not like you're forced to read, like, you know... Jane Eyre. Yeah. Ugh. Sorry but, for all you uh, fans out there, but <laughs> I am not one. So, you know, anyway, part of reading to me is the whole experience. Exactly. That's why the, you like the Harry Potter so much. Yes. The, yeah. Yes, and... You know, so we were talking about, well, why not incorporate things that we enjoy when we're reading? You know, given the, the season, like, as fall hits, like, probably August, <laughs> I will be starting my pumpkin spice lattes, my oh, pumpkin God. bread, my pumpkin muffins, my pumpkin body washes. I've got pumpkin soaps waiting and candles. I will have one piece of pumpkin pie a year, and that's it. it. it that's that's yes. all I need. We are, we we're like, well, let's incorporate that, you know, because I'm like, you can't read a Christmas cozy without hot chocolate exactly. or, you know, or at you least can't, a cup of tea or, or something. Yeah, or even a glass of wine. So mm. on our discussions... We're going to try to incorporate some of the things that we enjoy when we're reading. And we're going to try to tie it in with what we're discussing. Not always going to be the case. <laughs> and then we talked about, too, like, I, I love to cook. I love to bake and that kind of stuff. And if I incorporate that kind of stuff, I will include recipes and that kind of stuff. And I'm a violent cook. I cook because people need to be fed. Yes. I do not like to cook, but I do it. See, and I <laughs> thoroughly enjoy that. So... With that said, today, Kim and I have been drinking um, tea, and the tea that we are drinking is called Discover Joy. It's lemon, vanilla, green tea, and so I'll let delicious. Kim talk about it because it's actually her tea. Yes, it's from the um, company Tea Motions, and basically, maybe I can read this. My eyesight's getting kind of bad. I'll read you their story really quick. Um, tea Motions is more than a tea company. It's part of my personal journey, and... 2008, I lost my twin daughters just days after they were born. Struggling to cope, I found solace in tea. I, I read really bad out loud. It sounds much better in my head, I swear, when <laughs> I read to myself. Um, one day, my sister Crystal said, I wish there was something I could put in your tea to make you feel better. Knowing nothing like that existed, we decided to create it. We are proud to share our line of teas um, with fine herbs and botanicals that support emotional well-being, transforming a simple cup of tea into a truly healing experience. I have three of their different teas from Tea Motions, and this one, it's almost empty. I'm not, you can't see inside, whatever. But um, the other two are still pretty full. 
But this one, oh, I love this one. It's so mm-hmm. good. Yeah, and I enjoy it. And so, like I said, we'll be talking about different teas and just wine, wine hot chocolates, just anything that we use with with we're reading like maybe our favorite chocolate you know or anything Mm -hmm. so we just thought it'd be kind of fun to add that so that's the tea that we're drinking today and for me the tea as well i'm studying to become an herbalist right now so um tea is even more special to me than it used to be (laughs) yeah she has some like big you know gallon jars jars of different teas and stuff so anyway we hope you guys enjoyed our podcast like kim said earlier follow us like us Send us recommendations. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye.